If you are a JavaScript developer and want to also start with the popular framework TensorFlow just with your preferred language, then this is exactly the right video for you. Hi, I'm Sasha. Welcome to my channel. A few weeks ago at a developer conference, I've been asked if it would be possible to create an end-to-end -end TensorFlow.js solution under 10 minutes. And with this video, I would like to accept that challenge and create under 10 minutes a complete solution. If you are new to this channel and want to learn more about advanced analytics, machine learning and cloud computing, start now by subscribing to this channel and click the bell icon so you don't miss anything. But before we dig into the code, I would like to give you a brief idea what I want to do. First of all, I'm using Node.js to create a convolutional neural network. Then I'm using a few X-ray images to train a model. After that, I'm going to create a web application from scratch. In that web application, I'm hosting the newly created model and do the inference part on the client side. So without further ado, let's dig into the code. So let me get started with that challenge. But before I start the timer, I would like to give you a brief idea what I already prepared. I created a folder with two subfolders, one for training the model in Node.js and one for hosting the model as a website. And switching to that folder, I also prepared already a data folder, downloaded some images from Kaggle and split those images into a train and a test folder. And I'm going to provide you a link to those images in the description below. Being in the train folder, I want to start to first initialize my packages JSON. I'm using yarn for that. And I'm going to add TensorFlow.js for Node. And since this machine has a GPU built in, I'm going to install the GPU package. Let's move to the web folder. Do the same thing in here. Express.js to host my web server. I also prepared some stuff in here. There's already a plain index HTML, which I'm going to show soon. Let me move to my Visual Studio code and let's start with the training part. So as I said, data is in here and let's have a look at one of those images. As you can see, those are X-ray images from um, tuberculosis patients and they are labeled. They are labeled in that way that they end with underscore zero or underscore one, zero for normal and underscore one for it's a tuberculosis patient. So that's what I prepared so far. So let's get started with developing our training. Adding my JS file and start with importing TensorFlow JS library. And I also want to split the project into some submodules. One to retrieve the data or prepare the data and one to host the model. So therefore, we need to create two additional files, data.js and one called model.js. Again, using the TensorFlow ones, but also file system. One defining path. And I also want to define some constants for directory paths. So first I'm defining a function to read the image files and that will return two arrays, one with the images and one with the labels. And I decided for the sake of being fast and easy to read to do everything synchronously. If you want me to also share an example doing that completely asynchronous, just drop me a note in the comments and I will publish a version using the, the file stuff completely asynchronous. And then just read that file into a buffer. So I read the file into the buffer 
And next thing I want to do, I want to convert that into a tensor, call it image tensor. And up next, I want to resize that image so they are all into the same size. And I want to resize that into a 96 times 96 pixels. After that, I want to convert all those values into float values and divide all values are read in there by um, 255 to normalize them. And since I want to concatenate those later on into a large set of images, I'm expanding the dimensions by one, which means that I currently have a TensorFlow D3 tensor and expanding those will be a D4. So up next, I'm checking the labels. This is mainly based on the file name and to be on the safe side to local lower the case and check if this ends with underscore one dot png. And last but not least, I'm going to return those two values. The next thing I want to do is really define a class and I want to specify constructor and that contains just two values. This train data set, test data set, I want to define three methods. One is, of course, loading the data. Loading images. And of course, I want to be able to return those. And as I said, I want to concatenate all those into one data set. I'm doing the same stuff with the labels. I want to also making categorical values out of that. That's why I call the one hot. And I need to specify that the one hot has only two values. And doing the same thing for the test data set. Export everything. For the model, I'm using a convolutional neural network based on a sample I also found on Kaggle. I'm going to again post the link into the comment section. So I'm specifying a few variables. So the kernel size, the size for the pooling layer, and then filters. I'm going to add three segments. I also have a few dropout layers. So let's start with a model, a sequential model, and I'm going to add a few layers. In that case, my first convolution layer with the filters, kernel size, and as an activation to use the relu. Of course, since this is the first input layer, I need to also specify the input shape, which will be the 96, 96, 3, another convolution layer, just without the input shape, the pooling layer. In this case, a max pooling. I have to specify some variables, in this case, the pool size. And last but not least, I'm going to add a dropout layer to avoid overfitting. I'm doing more or less the same thing with the second block. So let's copy everything out of here. The only difference is of larger filters. Last but not least, exactly the same thing for the third layer. I'm going to add a layer to flatten everything and going to the dense part. In that case, I can specify the units 256 with an activation function again with a relu function, adding again a dropout layer with my dropout for the dense part. There will be only two units at the end and the softmax. Last but not least, I want to specify an optimizer. Let's use an atom optimizer with a learning rate of this and specifying my optimizer as well as my loss function binary cross entropy and last but not least a metric in this case the accuracy and again i'm exporting that and let's stick everything together so first loading the data as well as defining my object and let me output this the shapes for that got an idea what's happening in there and i also want to see the model summary. And last but not least, I need to split for the internal parts of the training and then I can start the training. In this case, the number of epochs, batch size and the validation split. And after that has been trained, I want to do the same thing with a test data set. In this case, so I do an evaluation of the model, get the test labels and the test images, testing the model to evaluate the model. And again, specifying the output.
and I want to save the model specifying where it will be saved in this case model safe path and last but not least just outputting that it's saved good so I only have to run that now 100 epochs 32 and save it to the model path let me switch to that machine again, move the training folder and just start our program, which is of course first loading everything required, then for a few seconds showing that this has two GPUs and that it's now training the model. In the meantime, let me switch back to the code. So what did I prepare? I prepared already a simple web server and just a plain index HTML file, which is doing nothing else than just using Twitter bootstrap to show a nice user interface face so the most important thing we definitely need is import the tensorflow.js capabilities as well as i want to add two files one with the labels and one with the logic behind everything so let's create those two files to make my life a little bit more easy i'm defining a target class this object in here and now let's dig into the predict part. And before I dig into that, let's first specify everything in here. Specify three rows. Well, let's, yeah, three is fine. One for showing a progress bar or loading model. Specifying two columns. One for control to upload an image and the predict button. Looks good so far. And I also want to specify the outcome with two diffs. One to show the image and the second one will display the results of our prediction. Back to the JavaScript file. And let's start with adding some events. I want to call a function to read that image. and then just storing that in a file variable and call the reader data url to load that file next i want to load the model as soon as the page is ready i want to call an async function so go to the progress bar and show that while this is loading load the model model json and just hiding the progress bar i need to implement the predict method and this first gets the image. And then I need to do the same things with the image I did while training the model. And then I can call the model predict method. And I'm just writing a simple top method. I want to map my predictions after mapping those. Then I want to sort that by the probability. Show only the first two and display that. Okay, so let's test it. For I start that web server, I need to go to the static folder and copy the model folder from training. And let's start that server. So let's switch back to the browser and load the website. For a few seconds, you saw that this is loading. Then I'll pick a picture and click on predict, which shows me that with a 93% probability, this is normal. Let's pick a second one. And that says it's 99.1% that this is tuberculosis. Yep, looks good. Okay, I think you got me. I cheated a little bit, but in the end, it was only 10 minutes. And if you liked that video, please give me a thumbs up. And if you've got suggestions, what I could do in the near future, what topics you are interested in, just let me know. Just use the comment section below. So, see you soon.